Okay, here is an example of an isentropic efficiency problem. We've got air. It's compressed by an adiabatic compressor from 95 kPa to 27 degrees C. Uh, and 27 degrees C to 600 kPa, 277, assuming variable specific heats and neglecting to change the kinetic potential energy, determine the isentropic efficiency of the compressor and the exit temperature of the air if the process was reversible. Okay. Uh, I want the isentropic efficiency of a compressor. Uh, that's H2S, H2S minus H1 over H2A minus H1. All right, so that's kind of what, where I'm headed towards, what I'm looking for. I like to write, um, kind of remember, uh, what are the properties of state 1, what are the properties of state 2 actual, and state 2 isentropic. So state 1, it is at 95 kPa. Uh, 27 degrees C. It is air. Okay, it is air. So I can use ideal gas and I can use those property tables from A17. State to actual, it is actually at 600 kPa and 277 degrees C. All right, to isentropic, uh, yes, we're going to still say it is at 600 kPa, but the, prop, the pressures that it operates between uh, are the same, even if it, it was isentropic. But this temperature, though, uh, we don't know. We don't know the temperature. All right. Uh, but we want to use relative, it told us to use um, relative, or, or it told us to use variable specific heats. So do you remember that process, right? If we know T1, we can find the relative pressure. If we know the ratio of relative pressures, we can find PR2. We can get T2. This is isentropic. Remember, this equation is for isentropic. PR1 over PR2 equals P1 over P2. Isentropic. Only isentropic. I can't emphasize that enough. Only isentropic. Okay. Uh, so that might be how we could get T to S. How do we get the H's? Uh, the H's for air are just dependent on the temperature. Uh, table A17 for a temperature of 27 degrees C. Uh, sometimes you might have to interpolate. Maybe it's you know, plus 273, so 300 uh, Kelvin. Maybe it's just right there on the property table for us. Uh, this would be 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. Um, and also while I'm at it, this PR1 would be 1.38, 1 1.386 uh, unitless. Uh, this right there, table A17, H2 actual, 554.74. Okay, so now I'm going to come down this to get T2S so that I can go to the table to get H2S. All right. Okay. Uh, for uh, the initial temperature, my PR1 was 1.386. So 1.386 over PR2 equals P1 to P2, 95 to 600. PR2, 8.754. Take that to table A17. Probably interpolate. All right. Interpolate. Here is where I will want you to interpolate. Uh, and I'd get a T2S 505.5 Kelvin. Maybe keep that interpolation open, you know, and interpolate also to get TH2S 508.72 kilojoules per kilogram. Let's go to the problem table, A17. Let's, let's, let's just show that. We've got a PR of 8.72. Okay, so table A17 on about table... Uh, goodness. It's back here, page 28. All right, a PR of 8.7. So I'm looking here at the PR 8. Oh, it's close to some of these other problems we have been doing. It's in between those two values. The temperature should be in between those two. The H should be in between those two. Make sure your answer makes sense. So 
top minus bottom over over middle minus bottom equals top minus bottom. That's how I do my interpolation. However you need to do your interpolation, maybe, maybe your calculator has an interp function, which I think they do. Um, find H2S. Okay. All right. So once I've got H2S, test three review, then I've got all this. I can find the isentropic efficiency. I can find the isentropic efficiency. Whoop. This isentropic efficiency eta, like this large, you know, uh, script n, would be, sorry. So I already solved T part B. I already solved part B. This is the temperature 505, part A, H2S minus H1 over H2 actual minus H1, 508.72 minus 300.19 over 554.74 minus 300.19 efficiency of 0.819 or 81.9%. 81.9%. Okay, a few things about here. So first of all, all those different if thermal efficiency, all those different isentropic efficiency um, equations for compressors, for turbines, for um, uh, nozzles, things like that, uh, they're all a little bit different. So make sure you're, you're make sure you've got the correct isotropic efficiency equation for what you're looking at. Uh, so you need these H's. How do you find these H's for air? Of table A17, right? Table A17. Uh, we could find the H's for air um, because. We wanted to use variable specific heats. We use this T to PR, PR1 to PR2, PR2 to TS. This is only isentropic. This equation, this process is only for isentropic. That would only help me get T to S. Right? Only help me get T to S. Okay? All right.